I give you Maxim Konavalov. Thank you. So it's a, it's a beautiful story. The company name is Nginx, and it's been a big deal for our country and for the market over the last year uh, because 670 million US dollars was waving in the air for the super technology that's been an mean, open, mean, open source technology in this room. <laughs> for years. Not in this room, but we believe that you have the money somewhere, you personally. And so we'll <laughs> we will ask you questions. And so from a, from a little boost, bootstrap, bootstrap company, Nginx went, uh, went global with 250 employees uh, with a great cost bought by F5 Network. Could you, uh, could you say a couple of words first? What is Nginx? So that, because yeah, not all of us are engineers. We, we call it Nginx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nginx is a classic definition of Nginx. Is Nginx is a web server and a reverse proxy. It's very boring, right? So uh, uh, to, to provide less less technical definition, it is a, like your entry point for your browser on your laptop or for your mobile client, client at server side. So it's like an internet access point for your client. Uh, this is what Nginx, and this is like very simply, simply uh, definition for like five years old kid, like my son. So your explanation is really simple, but, and then for some reason, 670 million. Just, you know, for the website to be shown on the internet. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's easy. Uh, Nginx today serves like a half of internet traffic. So uh, I'm talking about Nginx open source product that was built initially by a single person, Igor Sisoyev, uh, who started this project in uh, 2002 as a hobby project. And uh, it was an open source uh, project from the beginning. And uh, by 2011, without marketing, without no costs for promotion, uh, Nginx served from 6 to 8% of all internet. So not just the Russian internet, but whole whole internet. So that's how it started. And now 50% of the biggest websites on the World Wide Web, is that including China or excluding China? Uh, it's hard to tell precisely. Uh, it does include a, at least part of China, like uh, Alibaba sites and uh, or so on. Yeah, that uh, uh, little internet web stores, right? Yeah, just a very shy one. Small, the small shy, market, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. And so what is the secret? How did you get half of the internet hosting using your technology? Yes, there is no uh, actually secret to share, unfortunately. Uh, Nginx is very simple, uh, yet flexible. Uh, high performance, secure, and uh, reliable uh, open source software. And that is why people started to use it, uh, like 2004. And as you said, yeah, half of internet uses it uh, today. Just because of that. If we could talk about the history a little more. So I remember I entered the Rambler in 2003, and I remember Igor sitting with s most of the servers in this, uh, next to him, behind his back. So he would listen to the to the coolers of the servers and writing writing his uh, his software, and he looked simple, just a Russian engineer with. No, no fame, no, sometimes even uh, no respect from the colleagues because they would say, nah, I am just asking questions, you know, this, is, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. He would say, okay, let me fix this. So how did that simple procedure went big? 
what what happened there? How did it start? I understand that you are one of the people that worked with Igor and just made him understand you, he needed to go global. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, that's true. Uh, I still uh, I still work with Igor uh, today, so <laughs> nothing changed basically. Uh, Igor is still a, a computer geek. If you ask him uh, uh, about him, he will he will told you tell you that he is not a businessman. He's like a he's, he's still a computer geek. We don't keep servers in the office these days. So, <laughs> so uh, more, more uh, now we have more uh, comfort uh, environment uh, for him. But he still work work. Uh, he still works on uh, code. He's, he uh, comes to the office every day and works on uh, on new code. So nothing changed. Uh, uh, what made Nginx so good, so great? Um, besides of figure talent, uh, as an engineer, I think that the main main answer to this question is uh, repeatable exercise. So Igor Igor spent uh, nine years working on this project, and it requires enormous effort to concentrate on all sorts of technical problems. So uh, thinking about myself, it's uh, well, it's almost impossible for me to concentrate on something, uh, something for nine years without interruption. It's really incredible. It's very exciting for me, at least. <laughs> and so, if uh, if we're ta -ta -ta. so if we're working on a formula, then first you need an engineer that is a really good engineer. So if you want to be, if you want to be famous and rich, after nine years, first you need a really nice engineer that is only concentrating on his job. Yeah, maybe two. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, <laughs> just <laughs> to have a backup. <laughs> okay, so uh, everybody needs a student and everybody needs a teacher. That's right. And so uh, let him work on his ideas. That's very important. But how does his ideas become a product then? Uh, it's also a part of uh, his uh, exercise, actually. He, uh, initially, he built uh, the product view. So it's not just the code. It's about complete view of the product. Ho uh, so Igor started to build it from scratch and uh, actually formed initial ideas, a uh, set of initial ideas, uh, how uh, the product should look like. But this is the big question. So first, of course, you need the idea, you need a spot on the market uh, that you work on, first for yourself and then for other other companies. But uh, then, how does a Russian engineer become an entrepreneur? Well, uh, because it's a great transformation. Because 2002, you don't look at the at the web as something global. You just look at your company, at your market, and you only go home and back forth. So you, you don't think of even traveling to work. Yeah, that's right. Uh, as I said previously, uh, Nginx uh, customer base, well, it's not really customers, but user base, because it was an open source and freeware free wire project. So we can talk about users, not customers. So, by, but anyway, by 2011, uh, like six or eight percent, all internet used Nginx, and it was it became it became crystal clear that there 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 was there were some business opportunities, and uh, three of us uh, came together: Igor, uh, myself, and one. Uh, uh, we had a had a third uh, co-founder, and started to talk about that. And at some point, we, we decided that, OK, let's try. Let's try and explore these opportunities. And uh, so this is how we decided to, to, to build a, a company. And the, 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 there, are many, there was a bunch of ideas how to extract, extract money from open source and freeware, freeware product. But we decided to take an, like an easy one, probably. Uh, we decided to explore the open core model. Open core model is when you uh, take an open source software 
and build uh, something paid, like commercial software on top. And this is what we have been doing since 2011. Uh, no changes, uh, surprisingly, in our strategy. So we continue to develop Nginx open source these days and continue to build a great open source freeware software. In parallel, we, uh, in 2011, we started to build commercial product, Nginx Plus, and uh, started to sell it to uh, enterprises and corporates. So this is what we are doing today. Yep. But why did you get the investments? So according to Crunchbase, beginning with 2011, you received $104 million as yeah. an investment. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, How uh, and why? Yeah, uh, uh, first of all, why? Uh, we have, uh, from the beginning, we wanted to build an international or global company with sales worldwide. That was was initial idea, and we never never uh, considered other options. So we uh, uh, and to build international company, uh, uh, you you need to, and fast and quickly, you b they basically need resources for that. You want to hire uh, you want to hire the right people with right attitude, right skills for your marketing for sales, and you want the best engineers to work on your products. And this is expensive, especially in the US. So this is why we needed money. We needed money for that, and we wanted to make it this fast and quickly. So and uh, how we get them, how we got them? Uh, basically, again, same boring story, no surprises. We, at that, at, in 2011, we, uh, we decided to actually explore uh, uh, approach uh, venture ventures uh, various ventures funds tell a story about nginx uh, tell our ideas about uh, possible possible business around nginx and uh, at that time we got a couple of term sheets and start fundraising for series a i cannot imagine you or igor uh, to be on a stage like this as a as a startup person, you know, giving a speech that, you know, we have made another Uber for backend, for hosting websites. But how did you pitch? How did you, how well, did you talk? How did you, wh where did you st <laughs> even start the conversation? Well, uh, we never actually tried to be uh, Uber for X or Facebook for Y or Amazon for Z. I, think I just my personal uh, idea about that that investors are actually fed up with uh, these stories um, so we 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 did, during all history of, uh, of the company of nginx we uh, talked with investors into technology technology niche and had no issues actually to talk with them uh, about nginx mainly because most of the portfolio companies already used nginx so it was very easy to get uh, to get good references about product. So that never was an issue for us. We uh, spent very very uh, little time to explain what Nginx uh, uh, did. So and that wasn't an issue for us to talk with in investors at all. So I don't have any magic recipes or uh, magic formulas how to do that. It just can just tell you story, our story. And the next question is, there's absolutely no material on your company in media. Because there are, uh, there are big companies that you read about all the time, all the time. There's something new, something new, something new. And, this, and their beautiful faces are all over TechCrunch and other places. What's wrong with you? Why don't we see a lot about... We are, not, we are not beautiful <laughs> enough. <laughs> so just simple Russian Our faces, engineers. yeah, Russian faces, that's, that's boring. Yeah, and, and sometimes dangerous. <laughs> no, uh, seriously, uh, we are in a B2B uh, market. So uh, we don't really need uh, such shiny stories and scandals. 
And uh, another point uh, I have at Nginx, open source have a super strong brand, super strong. If you walk in San Francisco with, uh, uh, with this jacket, this Nginx logo, someone will approach you and uh, tell you uh, the like, thank you for great software. It's just true stories. This happens every day. So uh, very strong brand. And uh, this uh, strong brand uh, saved, saved us and still saves million of marketing dollars. Uh, another, from other hand, uh, you're quite right. Uh, press and media, they want something, something hot and uh, something sexy, something they, want, they can sell to audience, to their audience. And Nginx is very really deep technology and boring company. So <laughs> yet another boring company. <laughs> But it's a big question then, how can an open source company with uh, a lot of open source code hope to be famous and rich again? Is there a chance? Because uh, as I understand, most of the open source projects have a problem and their future is always open source till the end of the days. Yes, yeah, that's true. Uh, that's very true. Uh, it is very hard to convert uh, open source uh, project or product uh, into into commercial entity. So uh, this is there are just a few uh, good examples of uh, right uh, right strategy uh, like Red Hat. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, I cannot provide a good recipe for that as well. We 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 uh, we enjoy by the open core model, but it doesn't mean it will work for everyone. It's a very unique combination of uh, open source product and our commercial strategy. So it works for us, more or less good, but it doesn't mean it will work for everyone. And so here's the situation. For example. Uh, if I w if I were an engineer and I wrote code and I open sourced it, and so let's say two thousand companies use my code and making money, what are my next three steps in trying to make some money out of that open source code? Uh, there are there are several several options here. You can provide technical support. Uh, you can you can provide so like uh, uh, customization service. Uh, you can pro uh, you can start to pay, uh, to sell licenses, but it is very tough uh, topic, especially if you uh, you have initially open source product with permissive li license. You can you can convert, and this is probably the most uh, most uh, interesting the, the most interesting option. Convert your open source product into service. Something that you sell as a service. Something like that. Uh, in Nginx, uh, we uh, tried actually this approach as well and uh, run at some point where we ran a, a SaaS platform, service as a, as a um, software as a service uh, platform for Nginx uh, monitoring, for performance monitoring basically, and alert management, um, but it didn't fly for us, it didn't work for us. So we had to, to stop it eventually. So again, no secrets and no magic recipe. Let's talk about living in Russia or abroad. So now you're a global company that works everywhere. Uh, could you achieve everything you have achieved by now uh, if you stayed in Russian Federation? Oh, we stayed in Russia. Yeah, we are in Russia and uh, I'm in Moscow and uh, our R&D office uh, is, well, one of our R&D offices uh, uh, in Moscow. Uh, yeah, it's possible to, be to build a global company uh, sitting in uh, Moscow or in Russia. It is a tough exercise. Uh, we were uh, very lucky to hire a brilliant uh, CEO for our uh, San Francisco headquarters in 2013. Gus Robertson, 
He's uh, now a head of uh, Nginx business unit at uh, Five Networks. Uh, but yeah, as I said, we were very lucky with that, with this guy. Uh, and still, it was a very tough to work remotely with the, the rest of our company, remote with our um, Western, uh, West foreign customers, with different culture, with different uh, way of uh, thinking and doing business. Yeah, so thinking back 2011 today, I would say I would move to the US. Uh, yeah, to stay close to all this stuff. Um, but back to your question, yes, it's possible to build a global company sitting in Russia, right? Still. Why didn't you go? Well, do you, do uh, you remember your logic? Yeah, from yeah. The logic was very, very clear. I had a normally uh, engineering office in Moscow, and I led this office, and still leading this office. So I wanted to be sure that we building right software, and uh, with right people, we uh, hire, we hire right people, and uh, we uh, had right processes and everything. Technical support and professional service. Uh, we built this uh, all this uh, stuff. Uh, elements from scratch, and yeah, th this is why I stayed in Moscow. And so, what transformation does an engineer need to become an entrepreneur? I want to get back to this question, because you talk about Igor, you talk about yourself, and you say all you care about is the product, that the code works, that we give the right support, and we don't want to go anywhere, we just want to write code. And what, what did you have to understand to start going abroad? Well, uh, uh, my transformation into entrepreneur-like uh, person started a while before Nginx, and it's still in process, I think. Uh, Igor, as I, <laughs> as I <laughs> said, still a computer geek, and he basically doesn't want to be a businessman at all. And this is good, no, no problem with that. Uh, so, how to become, how ing an engineer can become an entrepreneur? I don't know. Maybe read some book, magic book, like I don't know. Uh, what I can recommend to do, what could be helpful uh, with that, is maybe learn other cultures, uh, Western culture, maybe Asia culture, uh, uh, work, ab uh, work abroad travel uh, and basically learn, uh, in our case, what will, would be helpful is learn uh, Western culture, how they think, how they do in business, because there are, there are many differences. And uh, this experience, very helpful. It was very helpful for us, and I think it's helpful in general. So for many, many years, you were writing code, you were working on this product, and then finally, at the end, you sell it. For big money, but anyway, you sell it. It's like, uh, I'm getting ready for one of my daughters to get married, and I will be really emotional. So how did you feel about your code now going? Yeah, uh, look, uh, Nginx today is 17, 17 years old. Uh, Legal to get married, right? Uh, well, in IT it means uh, 70, like 70. <laughs> it's okay to let it go. So, <laughs> so but seriously, uh, we talking about this transaction, this merge or acquisition, we had no concerns uh, for the following reason. We, uh, F5 Networks is a leader, actually, is a, is a lead technology leader in uh, load balancing and uh, application acceleration. We know this company, we know their products, and they are great, really great. And uh, this company, company's merge is very natural. Uh, I talked during the acquisition process, due diligence process, I talked with dozens of uh, people, literally, from F5 networks, and found that they had a huge respect to our work. And uh, I... Well, because you are a great competitor. Yeah, yeah. And you were ready to kill the project, so they I had to buy you. 
<laughs> well, uh, partially, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the engineers uh, don't really think this way. They enjoyed uh, the product we built from technology point of view, and they appreciate what we, uh, we've done so far. So uh, right people with right culture, with right at attitude again, and right, this is right home, and I had no concerns, and I, I became confident about Nginx product's future and uh, our people's future within this company. So we were okay. Can you name two mistakes that you as a company made in the whole process? Well, we had to start early. We spent uh, too much time talking. So uh, we had to start 2007, maybe 2009. So, and you, we, have go, uh, we, had, we had go quicker. So uh, we spent a lot of time of talking and uh, discussing, and yeah, so we have to had to go quicker. So, looking back, what advice do you give to young engineers that come to you and say, "Okay, I have some code. I am sure it's good. I'm sure it may become a product. What are my next steps?" Yeah, I do have a lot of advices, just my favorite two. Uh, the first one is don't pay much attention to advices, mainly because they are uh, cheap or even free. Real actions, real actions are not cheap. So concentrate on real actions and uh, concentrate on your gut, gut, gut feeling. You have intuition, you and your team no product, uh, your product or products, uh, your service, and uh, know your strategy. So uh, trust your gut feeling. Another advice is to, uh, is to never think this is a short run. This is quite, quite contrary. This is long run, long run. So if you are thinking this way, oh, we are so cute, we are so smart, we are pro our product is so sexy, so someone big will come in the next two years and buy us, so forget about that. N no way, this is long run and uh, n no one will come and buy you. Uh, so be prepared and plan accordingly. Uh, we, all, we all know that like the journey of a uh, thousand miles starts from the first step and the first step is very important. But don't forget about million other steps you have to do and million steps in front of you. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Maxim. We have Thank you. one minute. If you have questions, please raise your hand and ask a question. Okay, that looks good. Uh, thank you for the excellent story. I have a question uh, again about the open source model for the software. As you mentioned that um, you used the open source model for your product and you are success. Uh, but still, uh, what would you say, uh, what would you think uh, about the current um, situation maybe? Uh, so what is more preferable, preferable for the new entrepreneurs uh, model of uh, software? What, is, what would be more successive, uh, open source model or commercial uh, model for us? Yeah, I got the question. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, it is not possible to answer uh, in a good way. It depends on your software, basically. Uh, so uh, either way can can work, and either way can fail. So n no good answer. Unfortunately, we have to sit. Uh, not we. You have to sit and uh, and check uh, uh, what 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 options you have, and. Uh, Again, as I said, trust your gut feeling. Open source is quite a relevant uh, model right now, and open core works for some companies. In the same time, uh, there are several discussions right now how to, how to fight with, for example, Amazon. Amazon takes, say, MongoDB and convert MongoDB to a, a, a service for free, uh, for, and uh, 
take MongoDB, for example, uh, for free and convert for paid service. And MongoDB company uh, has no benefits of that. Basically, they lost customers because customers move to uh, AWS and use MongoDB as a service and uh, don't bring any, ma any money to MongoDB company. This is a real issue. And they trying to fi fight with uh, AWS and Google, uh, Google Cloud and Azure to extract some money back to the company. And this is a real issue. So it w can work for you, can, can, you can fail with this approach. No, I don't have any good answers for you, sorry. Well, we need to finish with a, in a positive manner. Uh, yeah, so that's right. <laughs> my first observation is the code that became, that became great was first working at a company, company that the guys were employees of. So first, what we need to do is become great engineers and become great professionals at the place of our work. And then the next step is maybe 670 million. Maybe more. Yeah. And good luck with that. <laughs> Maxim, thank you very much. Thank you. All the questions left, please ask in the zone of coffee break. Let me shake your hand. Thank you.